But now America has re-engaged and tomorrow should bring some kind of truce. Then the two sides will be facing all the old issues that defeated them in the past. Calling a ceasefire will be a lot easier than keeping it and any truce will be fragile. But it looks like there could soon be a return to peace talks and that is more than many in this region had dared to hope. Ola, thank you very much. Now, I've just been told that uh, in the next few minutes, the yachtswoman Ellen MacArthur is set to break the record, become the fastest person to sail solo around the world without stopping. After 71 days at sea, she is now approaching the finish line just off the coast of Cornwall. So let's join Sean Williams straight away, who is in Falmouth. Sean, over to you. Yes, Hugh. Well, Falmouth Harbour, of course, was where Ellen MacArthur set off more than two months ago to go to the start line, which is just off the coast of northern France, to begin her round-the-world solo record attempt. And we are hearing she's just a matter of miles away from the finish line. Adam Parsons has been tracking her progress. Ellen MacArthur today, more famous than ever, yet still utterly alone on the sea. She is edging closer to home tonight on the cusp of breaking the world record. She has already been away for over 10 weeks, rarely sleeping for more than an hour at a time, and she sounds utterly weary. I've got to get it right. I've got to do it as swiftly and as sweetly as possible. But I'm very tired. I had about, well, less than one hour sleep yesterday night. I've been up all day today. I'm going to be up all night tonight. And uh, I'm just trying to keep things together until we cross that line. I'm absolutely exhausted. This epic journey started with MacArthur easing out of Falmouth Harbour. By the time she reached the equator, she was ahead of record pace and in high spirits. One. Southern Hemisphere, yahoo! The waves grew bigger though, and so did the challenge. Christmas Day proved a dispiriting experience. No opening of presents, no celebrations. I can't even get through on the phone to anybody right now. Generator stopped working 10 times this morning. I've got a leak above my bunk, so my bunk's soaked. And uh, I think that's about it, really. So not a great Christmas, not really Christmas spirit whatsoever. Let's, uh, let's just look forward to celebrating the New Year instead, eh? Yet MacArthur's pace quickened as she started on the long route back from the Southern Oceans. She seems to flourish in solitude and in adversity. Shortly, she should be crossing the finishing line. And now there is company awaiting her, first from a naval patrol vessel that left harbour this morning and will trail MacArthur home. Then back in Falmouth, an apprehensive welcome from her parents. I'm still happy while she's out there because she's in command until she crosses that line. Once she crosses that line, it's really over to the, to the media, the sponsors, the requests, and I think after 70 days in a wind-powered washing machine, that will be hard to deal with. <laughs> Ellen MacArthur's voyage around the world will finally finish when she moors alongside this jetty, probably sometime tomorrow morning. She has been away now for more than two and a half months in total solitude, but the good news is she's making steady progress towards the finishing line. She is out there at sea, still edging her way towards one of sailing's greatest records. Adam Parsons, BBC News, Falmouth. Well, she's edging away rather fast because she could be there in the next couple of minutes at that finish line. Just to remind you that in order to beat Francis Joyon's record, which he set last year, she would have had to have reached the finish line by Wednesday morning at four minutes past seven. Well, of course, it looks like she could do that by a whole day sooner than his record. We're going to cross right now to John Kay, and John is on HMS 7. HMS 7 is tracking Ella MacArthur's boat. John, what can you tell us? Where is she? Sean, it's a very black night out here, not much moonlight at all, but just in the last few minutes we've started to see uh, that white flashing strobe light of Ellen MacArthur's trimaran. She's come more than 27,000 miles, she's been away for more than two months, but she's now a matter of probably just over two miles from the Ushant Lighthouse at uh, the finishing point. It's uh, where she started, in a way she's coming home, but uh, as you said, she won't stop here. She'll keep going through the night back to Falmouth. That's her real home, I suppose. Uh, next to me at the moment, uh, members of Team Ellen, as they describe themselves, uh, the support crew, who, uh, once she's a couple of miles uh, past the line, they will leave uh, HMS 7, uh, which I'm on at the moment. They will get into some small ribs. They'll go and join her. And uh, supposedly, they will sail the trimaran back to, to Falmouth for her. But uh, 
Her friends who know her well say after the journey she's had, she's unlikely to relinquish control. But the bright light, a bright light on the horizon at the moment that her teammates, her friends, her supporters and people around the world will be very, very happy to see in the uh, darkness this evening. Indeed, they will, John. I mean, just listening to what Ellen was saying in her emails over the past couple of days, she really says she has used up every last drop and ounce of her strength and reserve to get to the finish line. She's going to be checked over by a doctor, isn't she, almost as soon as she gets over that line? Yeah, that doctor is a Canadian. He's a sailor as well, and he's a member of this seven-strong team of uh, crew who are going to be joining her. Uh, literally, it could be within the next half hour. Uh, yeah, I mean... It's only when you, you look at the statistics and you realise just the scale of what she has achieved here. I mean, she hasn't slept for more than 15 minutes at a time for two and a half months. Uh, most of the time, she's very rarely had more than 10 minutes sleep at a time. Uh, and uh, apparently in the last 48 hours, she's hardly slept at all because of the nature of the channel and the heavy, uh, the heavy shipping area here. It means that she just hasn't been able to switch off for a second. She's on her own. She has to navigate. She has to make sure she's safe and she's not in anybody else's way. So the pressure has been immense. She's had a, a 